Welcome to another edition of the Business Brains in the Bottom Line podcast. My name is Paul Delegro, your host today, and my guest is Megan Dean, coming to us all the way from Copenhagen, Denmark. Welcome to the show, Megan. Yeah, hey, thank you for having me. You don't sound like you're from Denmark, so what's your history here? Where are you from? Uh, born in Orange County, California. Okay. My dad's a master sergeant in the Marine Corps, so we okay. were, lived in Japan, all over the States. Um, and about four years ago, almost, I moved to Copenhagen, Denmark, and um, my family's all from Texas. I had a Texas accent, and I had to lose it because nobody can understand me when I talk like this. So oh, I God. Have- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, beautiful part of the world. I, uh, I just came back from Europe. I was in uh, Ireland, Scotland, and Italy for three weeks. So, I'm, matter of fact, this hat I bought in Scotland, so I'm donning it for the podcast today. Yeah, so. suits you. But, well, we could go on for hours about Europe, but I think that the bigger reason why we wanted to talk is that you, you work for a company called Cloud Olive, and uh, you're a um, basically a, a SaaS provider for MSPs. So tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing. I typically try not to make these commercials, right, for you, but what the service you provide is pretty, pretty impressive. So what uh tell me a little bit about cloud olive and then we'll get into the nuts and bolts of of how you can help companies yeah it's actually a really cool piece of technology so we are a billing reconciliation platform specifically for msps that run either connectwise managed or autotask psa and we centralize every single vendor every supplier that they resell inside our system compare it back to what's inside the psa and then tell them where all of the billing risks are to them at the moment and then help them reconcile all that very quickly. Okay. So obviously, you know, anytime I see a software as a service, you're you're solving a problem. So what for these MSPs out there, what what is the problem? Like you know, obviously, you know, they got thousands of customers, they're billing. What what's what is what was the genesis of your company starting and what problem were they solving? Yeah, so I think if I just can rewind a bit back to okay. years ago. So one of my co-founders, Adam Ross, uh, him and I both used to work at Autotask and then subsequently Zato. Um, but we specialize in Autotask PSA. And for many, many years, we would always be asked by our customers, like, guys, what are your other clients doing to do the billing reconciliation and deal with consumption changes for all these vendors every month? And at the time, there was literally no answer. I would cross my fingers, I'd run to the sales engineer, ask them if they had an answer, they didn't. Um, and that's just been the reality of the situation for a really long time. And I guess that problem bothered Adam so much to the fact that he now created this company three years ago. Um, and so the main reason why this challenge exists is because there's not really a set standard on how to configure the billing component of the PSA. Um, There's so many different ways, so many systems we've seen, so many different setups. And because of that, there's never going to be a one way rules all. A lot of people have different nuanced billing arrangements with their clients. Therefore, their systems built differently for different things. Um, So that is kind of where the core challenge exists. And yeah, and and it's a very big headache that is spread wide across the industry um, all around the world. Like I've worked with MSPs all over North America, all over EMEA, um, and they all face this kind of core challenge when it comes to billing reconciliation. I mean, I got to believe if if you've got thousands of customers and like you hit on one point, things, you know, consumption changes, things changing, your billing cycles change. uh, What have people done in the past? Like how do people manage that if they don't have a platform to manage it for them yeah so i would say nine times out of ten the what i've seen in the past working for auto task and also what i see to this day nine times out of ten people are living in spreadsheet lands so on one screen they have all of their vendor invoices and reports pulled up and then they've got their mega magical spreadsheet on the other screen and what they do is they actually just compare things and then they 
put all the differences down in the spreadsheet on what needs to go into the PSA. So you can imagine this is very manual. There's a lot of lines that you need to go through, a lot of vendors. You're getting invoices and data from portals, from email, from yeah. invoices, from everything. Um, so most people who I speak with and now and in the past are using spreadsheets. Um, there's also a small percentage of people that work with developers and they've actually had developers build something for them, um, which is quite cool. Um, kind of the challenge there is that's this is a very complex, complex, difficult problem. And it takes a long time to research this problem to, in order to even know what to build. Um, so right. the challenge with these kind of custom developed things are they solve maybe 70% of the problem. Um, but then of course things are always evolving and right. the system doesn't keep up with it and it's not a bulletproof system anyway. So yeah, that's typically the, the two main, um, or, or the third one, people just <laughs> people just aren't um, tracking this stuff. Um, yeah, I and, and I'm sure, I'm, and I'm assuming one of two things. I'm just taking a guess here. Either you're overcharging your customers or undercharging your customers in a lot of cases, right? Yeah. And yeah. undercharging would be the problem. Obviously, you're leaving money on the table. Yeah, or not charging for something at all. Um, yeah. We literally were onboarding someone uh, last week, and during the onboarding, we start running data through the platform and found out they weren't charging for something for four years it just wow. didn't exist in their psa yeah so that's also another um real risk for a lot of these guys yeah so i would say i would say that the payback would be pretty quick you probably i'm taking a guess at being in sales all these years you probably run a demo right do a test te te, you know test data and then show them that hey we can save you or make you x dollars and guess what we'll, we're not going to charge you as much. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we no, that's exactly right. Um, our whole ethos here is we will find your ROI. We expect to find your ROI uh, within two months of using Cloud Olive. So we are capturing really? every piece of revenue down to the cent that you're not billing for. Um, also, what you're overbilling your clients for. And we've done studies with our current clients on how much of an impact this has in terms of the time it takes them to do manual reconciliation every month. And we right. found we're generally time in a six to eight factor. Um, really? We're, we're saving them and speeding it up. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it can't be, you know, it can't be fun looking at spreadsheets all day, but if you've got, if I'm, you know, obviously this is automation, right? This is automating a process to save manual labor. So I would think just the ROI from just the labor you would save uh, would, would justify this, something going with uh, Cloud Olive. Now I'm assuming there's competition out there. How many people are in your space? I mean, you don't have to name names, but is it a, is it a crowded area or is this a re relatively new technology? It's actually not a crowded area at all, um, which is the most impressive part about this whole thing because it's such a massive problem and a headache for everyone. There's really two competitors that we regularly come up with, um, come up against. And yeah, it's, it's, we do things very different than that, how they do things. Um, so for the first 11 months of kind of Cloud Olive's inception, and we've been around for three years, um, Adam and our other co-founder Enrico, who's like a wizard and, and builds all kinds of really, really cool stuff. They did manual reconciliation for the first 11 months uh, for a handful of clients that just wanted it done. And at the end, they would give them a report and said, hey, these are all the things you need to go fix inside your PSA. Wow. And that's really the core of why Cloud Olive is such a unique and um, flexible platform. Because for that first year, before they ever even built technology, they were researching the problem. It's such a dangerously complex situation to be in. And they've seen all these different nuanced billing situations and the need for this and the need for that. And they also learned the limitations of Excel and where technology just needs to take over. Um, so that's how we were actually just, that's the foundation that we have, um, which is really unique. And, and also is why are, why Cloud Olive is such a, a flexible um, platform. Now, where are you guys based out of? We're headquartered in Sydney, Australia. Um, okay. That's where, yeah, that's where everyone is. Um, and then, of course, I'm here in uh, Copenhagen. Now, I'm assuming you have representation in the States. What's your sales organization look like there? You're looking at it. <laughs> really? 
Yep, that's me. Um, so I work uh, I work EMEA and I also work North America as well. So it's, um, you know, at the worst case, Texas is seven hours behind and California is um, nine hours behind. Nine so hours. It's, it's not that bad. And yeah, and at some point, Australia takes over and we have a really nice cutoff where it's my evening and their morning. So it actually works with where we're located in the world. Wow. Yeah, that, uh, so I would, I was just in Europe and in, in when I was in Ireland and Scotland, it was a six hour difference. And then Italy it was seven and I was mm-hmm. trying to get on calls and do things, do a little bit of work. Cause I was gone for three weeks and I felt like I couldn't just leave for three weeks. And it was kind of awkward because the times when we were out was when you guys, when you guys, people in the States were getting up and starting to work. So it was like three, four in the afternoon and, and I, I've got to get on calls. And of course, at that point, I already had two or three pints of Guinness in me or a couple of glasses of wine when I was in Italy. So it was a little bit, little bit goofy, but I guess if you live there, it's, you're sitting at your desk. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and right now it's seven, almost seven thirty in the evening. And luckily in Scandinavia, it's summer year round and the sun never goes down. So that helps. But, um, you know, you just get used to it. It's, and I, I'm actually a really big night person, so I don't mind to do the late meetings. Um, I actually yeah. prefer that. Yeah, not me. I'm, 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 I go to bed early and I get up early. You know? <laughs> I wish I could be that way. <laughs> uh, you will as you get older. So, well, get yeah. getting back to uh, getting back to uh, cloud olive, or really generically the the the, uh, the industry in itself. I mean, where do you see this going? Uh, you know, where do you, what's the development? I mean, what other additions do you think you can make to just you know? doing the billing, what other aspects of it do you think will be added down the road here? I think that is an awesome question. It's something I was just talking about today. Um, so we've just released two uh, free tools and we're expanding on those. So we didn't just release them and throw them out there and then forget about like we invest in these tools because one of them is a freemium product. It's a freemium version of Cloud Olive, and it basically is as good as pulling a report from ConnectWise or Autotask PSA. It shows answers to questions across like, how much am I making across my security stack? How many units AV are out there? Um, and it's basically just allowing filtering between your clients and what services and contracts they have, showing you profitability unit counts. So that's one, um, which is a little bit of a sidestep from the billing. Right. The other one, which we're on a, we just released the wait list. Um, it will be coming out very, very soon. It's called NC Easy. <laughs> which is a um, pretty clever name, whoever came up with that. And uh, and it's basically tracking the seven day. So every year, an MSP has seven days of a window to make changes to a client's um, NCE usage and license count. And okay. typically what happens is different clients have different renewal windows. So it's very, as you can imagine, across tons of clients, it's very difficult to track. Um, so this, this other tool that we're coming out with very soon is going to help track those renewal windows. Um, and you know, when I, when I started at Cloud Olive, which was back in end of March, um, I remember one of the first things Adam said to me is like, we just want to build really cool shit and it solves problems for people. Like that's, yeah. that's awesome. And when I do, when I speak with people like these problems, I just, this light bulb goes off and it's like, yeah. yeah well, that, so that, that leads me to my next question. Obviously, you know, you're talking to people all the time out of, out of a hundred customers, what would you say most of them are doing today? Just spreadsheets? Is that? Yeah. Wow. Yep. 100% spreadsheets. Yeah. And they probably have some type of like really cool formulas that they've built in because this is something they've been using for years. Um, yeah. Some so sort of a home, some sort of a homegrown, you know, yep. tool, but still it's a homegrown tool. Yeah. 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 And as impressive as their spreadsheet wizardry is, um, there is just actually a lot of limitations with Excel and pivot tables and, and things like that. And there's still a lot of manual um, reconciliation that goes along with it. But yeah, most of them are using uh, spreadsheets or just not doing it at all. Um, I actually had a an old client from Autotask Days that I spoke with the other day. Love the guy to death. He's hilarious. And I was asking him these questions like, what are you, what are you doing today? And how often are you checking that? you're getting billed is profitable going to your clients. And he told me, um, God, it made me laugh. He told me, I've got money in the bank, so I'm just not checking. As long as I've got money in the bank, I'm fine. And I said, well, no, what's, your good, 
That's a good strategy. <laughs> it actually made me laugh because it's such a it's such a him thing to say, but at the same time, I'm like, no, yeah. don't do that, you know. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that was his answer, and that's also a lot of other people's yeah. answers. Well, if you know anything about human nature, we do things for two reasons: we gravitate towards pleasure. And, and gravitate away from pain. So if something's painful, you tend to not think about when you get up in the morning and you have tasks to do, cleaning your house, whatever it might be, the painful ones you don't get to. Like the easy ones you knock out. Well, you should do it the opposite, I think. You should do the painful ones first and then the easy ones after that. But uh, yeah, I think a lot of people don't do anything because it just, it, it's painful. Yeah. To 100%. make, anytime you make changes, it's painful. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, like that's that's something we recommend because if you think about these MSPs in general, like when they sign on a new client, they run an audit, see what yep. they have, technology estate, and they slowly start rolling out their services, their products. They don't just do it in one go. And that's that's the same thing that we also recommend when you're making changes to your billing component, um, when you're implementing Cloud Olive, like it's whatever it is these changes have to be slow and over time sure um, you don't have to just you know megan as, as you're working with your customers i mean what are some of the things that you see right out of the bat that indicates that okay these guys need help yeah so i think when someone tells me that they're spending a couple of days three hours to three days on billing reconciliation a month or they say yep. they're not doing it, they maybe spot check it every six months. That's a big red flag. That signals this is a painful thing, like you alluded to earlier, that they're just yeah. avoiding taking a very long time to do. Um, that's a massive pain. Um, also, if, if there's no way, a lot of MSPs are using integrations between Autotask or ConnectWise and the vendor. And I'll always ask the question, like, how do you validate that that data and that integration is doing what it should be and everything's correct. And if they don't have a way to validate that, it's also another um, another bump in the road. Um, and then also too, like if there's no, if, if you don't feel 100% confident that your invoices are 100% accurate, and a lot of people don't, they have they feel like it's okay. Um, right. That's also a, a, a big red flag as well. Yeah. So, if, so the old adage is, and we, we, no matter what you sell, right, we have customers too, and um, sometimes they just do nothing, right? They go, what we have is good enough. I mean, what, are the, what, are the, what do you see happening if an MSP does nothing? What do you see happening to that MSP? Yeah, I see their margins compression, compressing and getting smaller and shrinking um vendor prices are gonna rise especially in this kind of economy state um cost of everything rising prices are gonna rise you're gonna miss those you're gonna stop seeing if you're profitable on a client contract on a specific service maybe you're losing a ton of money on a service maybe you should reconsider your prices or to not offer it anymore or bundle it a different way and then ultimately if it's almost like everyone I speak to gets into business with the intent of selling the company down the road or getting investors in or buying other MCs. Right. And the rea reality of the situation is it's it's really hard to get people interested in investing in your business if you yeah. are unable to answer with certainty specific yeah. questions about profitability and margins and tracking this stuff and um, year on year growth. Um, it's really, really difficult. Yeah, and if you can't get a handle on the numbers, I, I would think you, you may have trouble down the road being competitive. Yeah, Right, Because exactly. you're not the only MSP out there, right? There's other MSPs, and if you can't, if you can't uh, track profitability, that's a problem. Huge problem, yeah. And, and the other thing, too, is you know, if you end up consistently overbilling a client, then you get into this rut and this difficult conversation with them. Nobody wants to have, um, and sometimes people catch it six months down the road and have to credit their clients six months worth of, of bills, wow. and that's a hard situation for anyone to be in. Um, yeah. And then you well, face the client. And, and the opposite, and the opposite is the problem too. Is, is if you undercharge your customers, customers don't like when you come to them in six months and say, "Guess what? You know, you owe us twenty grand, or thirty, whatever the yeah. number is." It, that doesn't usually yeah. go over too well. Or they get a 17% price increase because yeah, yeah. you come to see that your contract isn't really profitable. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a tough position to be in. 
Well, Megan, if um, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, obviously, if someone that's in the MSP space and and they you know they hear this conversation, if they wanted to get in touch with you, how would they do that? Um, more than welcome to um, email me. It's Megan at cloudolive.com. You can also, if you're in APAC region, you can also email Adam at cloudolive.com. Um, you can also. I just kicked something off of my chair, so I will stop that. Should I answer the question over? Sure. Yeah. Oh, how do, yeah. So Megan, if, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, how would, how would they do that? Uh, obviously an MSP that needs help, sees this, it resonates with them. What, what would be their next step? Yeah. Um, you can message me on LinkedIn, uh, Megan Dean. Uh, you can also email me, Megan at cloudolive.com. Um, if you're in the APAC region, you can message Adam, Adam at cloudolive.com. Um, yeah. And just feel free to reach out. It's, um, it's an easy going conversation. We just, want to understand what you're doing, how you're doing things today, the main challenges, maybe Cloud Olive is a really good fit for your situation, um, hopefully, um, and we can help with some 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 issues that you guys are having. Um, yeah, so anyone's welcome to to reach out. Awesome. Well, any any last words for your uh, your fans out there? <laughs> well, if you've made it this far, thank you guys for uh, watching and listening. <laughs> Um, no, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been, uh, really nice to speak with you, Paul. And yeah, a big fan of the podcast. I've seen a couple of episodes, so I really appreciate you having me on and, um, yeah, thank you for your time. Well, thank you. I appreciate you coming on. I know this is nighttime for you. It's, I think it's noontime here. So it's night, early evening, I should say for you, but you said you're a night owl. So not, a, not a problem. Yeah, totally fine. <laughs> cool. Well, well, we'll end on that note. I think we, we, we had some good coverage on, uh, on the problem and how to solve it. So that was, uh, I think it was good stuff. And um, that's a wrap for uh, Business Brains in the Bottom Line. Until next time.